And now we are in the DAW. I am going to play a little section of Murgo's Lullaby. Upcoming song from Beyond the Veil should be out soon. I'm going to play a section from this song with the whole thing. And then the same section with just the vocals so you can hear the sound that we are trying to achieve. And then I'll break down how I got that sound. So here is the section Fool. Very monstrous, very big, very huge, very death metal, death core, whatever you want to call it. Just big, scary vocals. That's what we're going for. So I am going to show you exactly how I got that. But what we're first going to do is mute the effects. We're going to mute the backgrounds. We'll go over that in a bit. Maybe we're going to mute the dub. We're just going to do a single vocal track, the main vocal track, and I'm going to shut all these effects off and go over them one by one. So we start out with the de and that is just to catch any S's. Just makes me feel better to have a de first in the chain, especially with screaming vocals. Uh, you get very, very harsh S's and trying to get those under control once you add saturation and everything else is a pain so as many as you can get out in the beginning the better and then we have a pro mb here and i am just cutting out unnecessary low end when it builds up in the vocal that's very subtle but um, once you get a bunch of vocals stacked up on each other, that can really build up and sound terrible. So it's good to get those under control into a pro Q where I am cutting out your more low end. At 142, I have a dynamic band at 2546 at a little less than minus 2 dB and then a shelf at 9700 cutting out about 3 db so we don't want that shrill high end either so let's hear what that's doing to me that just cleans the vocal up into one of my favorite plugins of all time i can't even explain what it does so it tries to balance any sound source to pink noise or white noise or something like that intelligently on the fly i have the tame at 24 percent no recover no bias no brighten no boost just tame Just another thing, cleaning up my vocal into an Elias DSR, Elosis, Elosis DSR. On the default setting, set it and forget it, and I'll show you here when it gets blacked out the S it's actually removing. You can see this empty little spot here. I swear she did her job. All right, and then we get into an L1 limiter. One of my other favorite plugins. Cutting up to negative 6 dB, and I just want it pinned. You heard how dense this mix is. The last thing you want is out of control vocals. The more control you can get all of your sounds, in a session that has 67 tracks you better believe i want them all controlled and then my last i just have a little black hole on here just to give it give it a little bit of reverb give it a little bit of life and that's at only nine on the mix and this is on the breathe in re, uh, preset <laughs> can hear those tails at the end that's what that's doing just giving it a giving it a little space and then those are all copied 
and then sent over to my dub, my backgrounds, and everything except the black hole. I have a little soothe at the end of these, um, these backgrounds. You can hear these backgrounds. That's just those nice, wide, fill the sound out in certain sections, backgrounds. I have them hard pan, left and right, and I treat these together. So the first thing in the chain is a, I have black hole with the mix to 12 on the bathroom effects. You can hear, let me shut that off. Shut everything off except that. You can hear what that's doing. You can just hear the, the tails at the end, like you're screaming in a bathroom. The whole idea and the way I mix to stack little effects, compressors, everything you want to do, you, you're not trying to do it all in one thing because that's a, a good way to, to get an amateur sound or to actually destroy your audio where it's not usable. I like to stack little things to get to the desired outcome. Next is a pro cue because the last thing we want in our side information is really bassy wide vocals. You can hear what that's doing. It's cutting out all the way up to 400 and I am cutting out high end also. And then I don't even know what I did here with Howard Benson. Oh, I have nothing on except the multiplier with a whole bunch of it and the width knob with a whole bunch of it and I mono the low end. So let's turn that on and now you can hear it. That's doing a lot. So that's giving me a lot of width. I want these vocals wide, 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 wide. I want my main and my dub down Main Street, right down the center. And then these are just to add some flavor. And then I am going into this free Mercurial Chorus. Um, it's probably really subtle what it's doing. I was just trying to get a little extra width out of it. Let's see if we can even tell what it's doing. <laughs> Yeah, you can hear what it's doing there. At least I can hear what it's doing there. That giving me some more width, a little more modulation. And then trusty L1 to keep everything in line. So that is our background vocals. And then we get into the bread and butter, the effects. So our first effects is Little Alter Boy. And I am pitching down negative two and the format negative two. The mix is 100% uh, wet because we're using this as an effects end, and that's coming right out of my Vox bus over here, which also has some stuff on it. Maybe we can go over that a different time. I don't want this video to be 20 minutes long. All right, so if we solo a little Alter Boy, what do we got? Monster. Monster. So you can hear what that's doing. I'm taking my main vocal uh, bus, sending over to Little Alter Boy, and Little Alter Boy is pitching that down by two. And then I am mixing that into taste. You can hear if I pull it in and out. So that's a cool effect just to get uh, more monstrous, more aggro, more thick, 
whatever word you want to use. But that is a neat little trick that I love. So after that, I'm just DSing the shit out of it. The thresholds all the way down. You don't want a bunch more S's in your uh, effects. Is that all? pierce your ears and will suck and then we are going into a chorus effect so if we solo that more low end cutout then I have this dimension D plugin and I have one and four on So that's just giving us some more modulation, some more width, some more thick, thickness, whatever you want to call it. And then the bread and butter to any heavy vocal sound in the modern era. Reverb. So I'm using Skyback, Skybox, Lost in the Big Room. And... These are all coming from the box bus. And then I just ease the taste. I have automation all over uh, to bring the effects in and out where I want. But let's hear what this guy does. There it is. That's the sound you guys all know and love. And uh, that is like a staple to any black metal deathcore vocal sound. You need to have the reverb. And then this black hole is actually only on the backgrounds. And that is... You can hear what that's done. Just giving it more, more width, more ambience. And that is pretty much it for the effects. So I know I said I was going to do this in a different video, but we might as well do it now. So I'm not going to take all these off because they are controlling a lot of what's going on and I don't want to blow your eardrums out. But I will go over them, so. You can hear what the gain reduction's doing there. Then I'm going into Decapitator for some saturation. And I have the drive on 10, which you think is wild, but the mix is only at about a... What's that? Maybe 30%, something like that. And then I am going into Pro MB again. And I have this DS and Enhance um, preset on. And that goes into a plate on the small uh, radium studio vocal, 37%. into another pro Q where I'm cutting out even more low end because low end is the enemy of vocal sounds. And I even have a little cut here around 500 that's dynamic to cut out some of that boxiness when it gets out of control. Once you start stacking up all this stuff, things can get out of control. And then I am going into another Pro MB where I have a preset called Michael DS where I'm manually, well, I'm not manually, but I'm multi-band DSing the entire vocals. Into another L1 to control everything even further. But as you can see, that one's just kind of kissing it. And then <laughs> another Pro Q2 where I'm cutting out everything below 200. But then I'm actually giving it some air back. The and 
And then that goes into my entire vocal bus where I'm giving it even more saturation. Let's pick a different section. Let's try the bridge here. So this is everything. This is all the effects, all the backgrounds, all the Vox bus stuff going into one final, basically control box final bus. And I'm doing a little bit more on that. So let's hear this section. So this, I have the warm tape preset and I'm just giving it 22% drive and that's just to, to add some harmonic excitement to the entire thing. Give it even more compression, more control into another L1. And you can see that one's just kissing it too. And then I am going to another uh, Elosis DSer, which you've already saw that, so. And then for the final touch, I am going into this free Slate Digital Fresh Air plugin. And that just gives it that final high-end sparkle that I am looking for. I will leave you with a little uninterrupted bridge. So that was how I achieved my extreme metal vocal sound. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and see you on the next one.